Hey, so today I want to talk about chasing a posture. So when we do our yoga practice, a lot of times there's postures that we just feel like we can't do. Like they feel so far away, like putting a leg behind a head or binding your hands in a pretzel type posture or even getting into handstand or headstand or um, doing a forward fold sometimes just seems so far away. So sometimes when we think about postures like that, we think about getting somewhere, like we're always trying to chase something or trying to get somewhere. And that's kind of the feeling we want to get away from when we do yoga. My name is Monica Dawn Stone. I'm from theyogimovement.com and keep watching this. Okay, so I want to talk to you today about chasing postures and maybe changing our mindset a little bit. So I realized that I would, you know, when I would do yoga, I would notice how I was feeling in each posture, which is what I would tell all of my students to do, and I still do. Um, I think it's important. So the reason that we do that is because we want to, you know, change everything off the mat too. So if we're rushing our practice, we probably rush things in life, right? And you know, if we're too hard on ourselves in practice, we probably feel like. Um, in life we're constantly pushing ourselves and not getting approval or praise for it you know and then in some postures we might feel really tight and we might find like why am I so tight I want to breathe a little easier we might compare ourselves to other people we might want you know to get a posture so that somebody says good job or something like that you know so um, thinking about what you're feeling in the posture is one thing, but the tweak that I did, which changed everything for me, was I asked myself, what do I want to feel? And that actually got to the root. And I thought about what Krishna Das says in his concerts, where he talks about how when we chant to gods or goddesses, we're actually trying to bring that stuff out from within. So you don't even really need to know um, what you're saying exactly, but if you know what, you know, that Ganesh is the remover of obstacles or that Shiva is the god of destruction, we want to bring those qualities out from within us and improve ourselves. So the, th the thing we want to remember is that we all already have everything inside of us. We're not trying to get somewhere. So when we're looking at postures as trying to get them, then we're not realizing that we have it already inside of us. And we probably do that then with everything in life. We're always trying to get somewhere. So if you can change your mindset to realize that you, you actually have everything in you already, you can actually do those postures. But again, you have to think of it in a way where you're not saying, I can, you know, if you want to put your legs behind your head um, and you already have that inside of you, when I say you can already do those postures, it means you can create the feeling inside that you want, whether or not you can put your leg behind your head or not, and then the chase goes away. So for example, you can think of it in terms of everyday life you know like what um, are you let's say you want to leave your job to get a better paying job but you are in debt right and you're doing that because you want to make more money and get out of debt but if you haven't actually figured out why you want to get out of debt how you want to feel when you get out of debt and changed your spending habits you're just gonna end up spending more money right and you'll be broke at a higher paycheck same with like if you're looking on a dating site for somebody to fall in love with. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with dating sites. This is just an example. But let's say you're feeling lonely. There's a void inside and you're feeling lonely. But the feeling that you want to get from being on a dating site is feeling like somebody's there and cares about you and loves you. So you meet somebody, you start dating, you fall in love, but then you actually just feel just as lonely because that person can't fill the void, only you can fill that void, only you can complete you. You um, can't find someone to complete you, you can only find someone to complement and grow with you. And until you do that, you'll constantly be chasing. So even if the person that you're with probably makes you feel completely loved or does whatever they can, you'll still be chasing that in other areas because you haven't completely realized it yourself. So if we think of that in terms of our yoga practice, what do I want to feel when I get this posture? Why do I want to feel this? So let's say in terms of, um, I want to feel accomplished when I get this yoga posture. Well, the thing is, is you have to know that you're accomplished already. Like you have that inside of you. So once you already know that you feel accomplished, you feel successful, like you know that that's what the root is that you're trying to feel, then you can start to create that within. And the chase is pretty much gone, right? So then you can work on the next thing. So I have a three part, or actually more, four part plan for you to kind of realize these things and to bring 
these qualities out from within. So one is ask yourself what you're feeling. So you're gonna need a pen and paper and you're gonna to wanna to do this, you know, kind of when we're done or you can do it with me. But you wanna ask yourself what you're originally feeling. So maybe you're feeling when you're doing a posture you feel tight or constricted, uh, you feel frustrated or angry or sad, but ask yourself what you're feeling and give it a name and really like feel that and cultivate it. You know, you don't, or not cultivate it, not like create it, but really like know what you're feeling and give it, feel it and give it a name and don't repress it because repressing is never good. Um, you want to be, you know, allow yourself to be human and feel these things. And if you repress it, then you're just going to keep blocking the obstacles. So the next thing is to figure out what you're trying to feel. What do you want to feel inside? Like we talked about. So, okay, I feel frustrated that I can't do this posture, mad at myself. So, you know, I want to feel happy inside. I want to feel free inside. I feel really tight and I can't breathe in this posture. So I want to feel, I want to have a sense of freedom, you know. I want to be able to breathe easy. So the third part is to make the change. And to make the change, you want to start to live your life the way that you want to feel. So you're going to take those qualities that you write down in number two. And you're going to start to live that way. So if you say, I want to feel free how would a person that you would consider to feel free live? Like they probably would be debt free, they probably would be traveling a lot. Um, but even if those are things that you can't do right now, like how would that person still live if they were you? You know, are you spending a lot of time at home? Are you sleeping in? Do you keep your windows closed? Like maybe you need to open up the windows and let the light in. Maybe you need to go out and spend some more time with friends. Um, do things that a free person would feel. And then maybe you want to say you want to feel more successful, right? So like how would a successful person live? And how would they feel? How would they dress? How would they act? So you want to cultivate that whole lifestyle. So you want to figure out what the void is that you're feeling, the obstacle, and create that in your life. And create when you hop on the mat, create that in your practice. Knowing that everything you're doing, even if you feel like you can't get to the posture or master the posture, that you really do have it inside of you to feel the way that you want to feel, right? The next thing is to surround yourself with people that empower you. So I think this is really important because we can, you know, who we choose as our friends really does affect our growth. So if you have big dreams and you want to do big things in your life, but you're surrounding yourself with people that just kind of are okay with mediocre life, then that's kind of going to hold you back. You want to be around people that inspire you. And there's nothing wrong with those people and those friends, and you can still keep them. But you want to spend more of your time with people that inspire you and can encourage you. So I don't know if you've heard the saying, you're the accumulation or the product of five people you spend the most time with so think of it that way that you want to surround yourself with people that can inspire and encourage you and empower you so that you can continue to grow and you guys can all inspire each other now of course there are going to be people that you just can't get away from like a sibling or a parent or a colleague or a boss but what we can do is you know, when we are in those situations, we can choose how we react to them. We can choose how often we communicate, you know, and we can just keep it to a minimum so that we don't have to let them disempower us. And then the next thing is to make the quality, write down the qualities of the people that you want in your, you know, that you would choose to be in your friends. So if, if you make a list of a bunch of your friends and you realize that none of them really have the qualities that you and the dreams that you have, you want to start to make new friends, start to write down the qualities that you want your friends to have. And that's the first step, really, in making the change and manifesting the friendships and relationships and the change in your life. And once you do that, you start to bring people in that really inspire you and encourage you, the people that you're around that disempower, disempower you will matter way less. And so all of this kind of goes together. I know we went from yoga postures to changing your life and your friendships, but if you want to create a better life for yourself, which is why we do yoga, we do yoga to help us and encourage us and um, help us grow, then you have to take that off the mat. So you have to realize what you're doing on the mat and how you can change that off the mat so that you can grow and be a better person. 
Another thing I want to talk about is that we still do have to put effort towards our postures. Just because I'm saying that we have the qualities within us to do these things and to feel this way doesn't mean that we don't work towards something. So that's another reason that we continue to do these postures over and over is because there's always room for improvement in life. There's always room for learning and growth. And continuing education is really important. So there is a yoga sutra. It says that asana is the balance of effort and comfort. So this is kind of the same thing. You're finding that balance of knowing that you have it inside and being okay with where you are and accepting who you are and where you are, but also putting effort towards improvement in your postures and in, you know, and then bringing that into your life. So when you can do that, when you can find that balance, then you're really learning to enjoy your yoga practice. So for example, um, you know, I left my job to start my own business and even the areas that feel like work, that feel kind of mundane, um, I still love them because I'm learning so much from them. Like I, and because I love what I do, right? So you want to cultivate that in your yoga practice. You don't want your yoga practice to turn out to be something that you find to be a chore or like torture. You want to hop on the mat and know that because your yoga practice helps improve you, that you love it and that you enjoy it, right? So how can you enjoy find that balance of enjoying your practice, that balance of effort and comfort. So anyways, I hope that that helped you. I, am, I really want to encourage you to stop looking at your yoga practice as a chase to get somewhere and try to use it to help you find and cultivate what you have within so that you can grow and just be a better person and do more of what you love and help more people. All right, so if you liked this video, please share it on social media. Go over to my website, theyogimovement.com, subscribe to my newsletter, tell all of your friends, and I hope you have a wonderful day and night. Namaste.